Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 7, Part 4 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, presenting further related information about the laws of compensation and focusing on the metaphor of reaping in proportion to what is sown. The session was recorded on the 12th of December 2017 from 11 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Proportionate compensation applied to embracing desire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What proportionate compensation will I receive if I want to be aware of and experience all of my desires? So that's my loving and my unloving desires. I want to be aware of them and experience them. Mm -hmm. um, and then I want to, we probably need to clarify, just act on the loving ones. Mm -hmm. But I did want to raise in but this example. You want to example, identify the unloving ones and, and, and work and your way work through why you through have them. them, don't you, as well? You, you want to feel all your desires, essentially, don't you? You yes. want to feel them. Yes. Yes. Because you, um, you can't correct anything you can't feel. So, exactly. So you need, you know, the ones that are unloving you want to correct, so you yep. need to feel them. Yep. And the ones that are loving are going to benefit you and our other people, so you definitely want to act yeah. upon them. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay, so... Um, uh, so if we look at the attitudes again, yeah. like we've been looking at so yeah. far, you see there's some really good attitudes here, particularly the desire for truth. We're basically saying, I want to be truthful about everything I feel mm -hmm. and about everything I want to do. Mm. Even if what I want to do might be destructive, I yeah. still want to be truthful yes. about the fact that I want to do it. Yes. So, so this is, it means that my life now is, is getting more in harmony with truth. Mm. I Even, want truth I and want I want to, yeah, and yeah, I want truth. And it's truth. not just some intellectual facade based, like, uh, you know, image of myself that I'm interested in yeah. here now, yeah. but it's rather a, a real uh, in-depth look at how I really feel internally in my soul. So, and, it's, and it's not just saying uh, or having conversation with one of us where we say, well, this is a situation, you go, yeah, 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 and I analyse my life and I go, oh, I probably have that desire because I can see I did A, B and C and I'll intellectually think about it. That's a different state again. Yeah. The, here we're talking about I can feel I want that. Okay, I can feel I want that thing. Yeah. 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 So I want truth on an emotional level. Yes. So this is about desiring to know yourself emotionally. Yes. Not just like having an image of yourself that you wish to maintain. Yes. Or that you've become addicted to maintaining. Yeah. But this is about knowing who you truly are right at this moment, warts and all, as the saying goes. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and you keep mentioning the image of yourself. Essentially, you're saying, I want to challenge my facade. Yeah, my concept of self. My concept of self that I've been going along with. Mm. And I want to, if what I want to believe about myself is not the truth, then I want to know that. You mm. know, I want to, I want to feel what I really want, not what I think I should want. Yes. Yeah. So this this obviously means that we're we're going to uh, stop this uh, interactions with other people where we want them to tell us who we are or we want them to think we're good or bad or you know whatever it is you know we often have very confused things about what we want from others. Yeah. Here it's saying right, let's give up what everyone's concept of me is. Mm -hmm. Give up what my own concept of mm -hmm. me is. And let's truly discover my concept of me. Like, mm. What is my concept? What is me? You mm. know, what, what, and, and face the truth of that. Mm. You know, so yeah. it's a very powerful process to go through. Yes, yes, mm. very powerful. And it also means that I'm unhooking from what others want of me or what they think I should be or what they want me to do. I'm saying no. I'm not going to let that guide me anymore. First and foremost, I'm going to feel what I want. Yeah. And that's a big shift, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a very positive So we attitude. stop hooking in. Yeah. We're not hooking in to people around us and being governed by their either loving or unloving demands. We're not, yeah. we're not, we're not going, oh, I'm going to do something for you because you want that. And, yeah. and I'm going to do it because I know I want to do that. Yes. You know? Yeah. And these are very powerful changes that we need to make 
emotionally yeah. inside of ourselves if we truly want to be ourselves and yeah. share ourselves with the world. Yes. Mm. Okay, so that's our attitude. Mm. Let's look at how we're going to be compensated for that. Yeah, I, it's it, massive. Isn't yeah, it, it is. Again, <laughs> like you know, you go I chose on for all days, the biggies. You go yeah. on for days about that, couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, you have a greater self knowledge. Yeah. And that that means that you're not confused about what you do in your life anymore or no. why you do it. Yeah, because I've I, I see a lot of people experience that where they just go, "Why the hell did I just do that thing?" <laughs> Or how did I get to this place in my life? Yeah. Or you know what's Often going their own on? Behavior shocks. Them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, if your own behavior shocks you, you don't know yourself well. <laughs> no, no, and that is the truth. Yeah. So we have greater self knowledge, and with that self knowledge comes the ability to change. Yes. Without it, we can't change. That's right. And so, wow, that's a big benefit. Yeah. 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 Um, th given the principle of, now let me say the correct principle here, uh, suppression, when yeah. we talk about the, um, the, way, the way the human soul, human operates. soul functions, which mm -hmm. we have a whole series, if anyone wants to view it, excellent series with Jesus about how this, there's a number of principles that govern the way the soul operates. And I haven't been exhausted there either, but we no. just had an introduction to it. <laughs> I'd love to revisit that with you sometime, mm. actually, and mm. have a, because, um, yeah, so that would be good. But given the principle of suppression, when I'm suppressing parts of my real feelings, mm -hmm. then I suppress, and if they are negative or unpleasant, I also suppress the potential for me to experience positive and pleasant ex emotions. That's right. And yeah. negative desires, if I'm suppressing them, or even positive desires, uh, or you know, loving or unloving or whatever we want to say them. I, the minute I start to want to experience desire, I immediately have a heightened sense of pleasurable emotions flowing through me. That's right. You get so you, the problem with suppression is you're suppressing. Like you can't. The way the soul has been created is yeah. you can't suppress one emotion. Yeah. and then have it not affect other parts of your system. Yes, you can't selectively the effort suppress. to suppress yeah. emotion yeah. means that the emotion is suppressed in other areas that you want, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. so, so you're far better off having no suppression mm -hmm. of your emotion and instead desire to feel, feel your emotion mm -hmm. and feel your desires. And, and, and then you can, after you've felt them, you can determine whether you want to act upon them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if they are loving, then you act upon them. If they aren't loving, then you just feel them some more until mm. they're gone. You know? mm. and, and this is what we need to do with ourselves if we're going to progress or grow. And it's also the way the soul works anyway. So yeah. it's something we need to learn as, as, a, as the way the, we've been designed to operate. Yes. Mm. Yeah. 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 Uh, also, we're going to get more done, aren't we? <laughs> we just are. <laughs> yeah, everything done with desire and self-knowledge yeah. means that you can be m much more rapidly uh, do yeah. things, but also you do it with passion and connectiveness. Yes. So you're not, you know, you're not sort of, you know, you see a lot of workers mm -hmm. nowadays, particularly with, you know, we've noticed it with the, uh, with with the new volunteer selection, selection program. Yeah how you give them a job of cleaning <laughs> and now everybody zones out, right? <laughs> so anyway. I was talking to Eloisa, who's uh, running that program with Tristan the other day, and she said, they hate it and resist it so much. I feel like we just have to keep doing it until they have yeah, a breakthrough like into feeling a something. It's a program of cleaning, cleaning. now. I think <laughs> some of them feel like that. Because it's like... <laughs> they don't realise what other activities they could so have done. There's so many <laughs> disconnected emotions when we clean because there's yeah. so many childhood events that we're trying to avoid, yeah. Yeah. you know, that get triggered when we clean. Yeah. And, and as a result of that, we're not connected. And when we're not connected, we don't do a good job. We have to do it again. Somebody else yeah. has to do it again yeah. if we don't. Yeah. and so forth yeah. you know and it ends up with like we don't think logically lots clearly. of time we gets just, wasted so much wasted time and we feel exhausted at the beginning and during and at the end because we're suppressing all the time we're suppressing all this emotion yeah. Yeah. and so you know this having a connectiveness to what you do means yeah. that everything you do no matter whether it's cleaning or some or some very you know interesting job yeah you still find it interesting. Yes. Right. So every yeah. job I've ever done, and I've done some very mundane jobs, yes. has always been interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and if we talk about the volunteer selection program again, just briefly, because there were some other jobs that needed to be done um, 
that were very menial and outdoor tasks and some of the ladies had never done anything like that before in the hot sun on hands and knees getting dirt in your fingernails that yeah. kind of work yeah. and um Tristan and Louisa shared with me how pleased they were when some of the women got so honest to say that they were just saying, I don't want to do it. I just, I just hate this. <laughs> I don't want to do it. They were connected with their real desire and they felt, exactly. the, well, all of us feel that's a step in the positive direction. That's right. The next step, obviously, is to release why you don't yes. want to. But, you know, obviously, if you don't see that, if you don't see the truth. Yes about your desire, then you're not going to correct it. And many of them just sit there going, I oh, know, it's okay, I'm fine. This is all good. I'm all good, yeah. Yeah, but this is so boring and <laughs> yeah. I hate it, you know, and I'd rather be somewhere else. And, yeah. and they remind us of, of somewhere else as well, oftentimes, yeah. which often yeah. is very dangerous. It is. Um, when you're doing manual work. Mm. But, but you know, these things happen because people are not connected to yeah. what they're doing. They don't see the benefits and there's yeah. a lot of other reasons, emotional reasons yeah. from childhood that get imposed. Yeah. But as a result, they're very... Unproductive. Unproductive. <laughs> to be That's frank. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and even it's fascinating to watch someone who goes from a state of going, no, it's fine, but hating it, not feeling their emotions, to someone who says, I really hate this hate job it. and I don't want to do it. The lift in energy mm. and productivity, even if they sort of like take a moment and then come back to oh, it. Yeah, I hate it. I hate it. Yeah, <laughs> you get a lot more done yeah. because you're more connected to yourself. Exactly. There's more energy literally flowing through your system. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway. Besides the fact that it's honest. Yes. Well, yeah, truth has its own compensatory rewards. A reward every time. Yeah. 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 Mm. All right. Uh, we also, I love this one, we have a greater capacity to become our true selves. Mm. And if we choose um, to not only experience our desires, but act on the loving ones, mm. then we will become our true selves yeah. because God created us as these desire-filled beings who express their personality and nature when in harmony with love. And he wants us to continually grow and, yeah. and continually, continually learn and yeah. all these things. And none of that is possible without desire, Yeah, you know, expressing personal desire and being yeah. engaged with desire. So you can see that, as we've mentioned in other examples, we're, as soon as we're embracing desire, we're in harmony with God's design, God's laws, all these things, loving desire, I should say, then obviously the compensation is going to be very... Mm. large yeah, rewarding yeah and i've written here because desire is one of the strongest emotions possible for the human soul feeling and acting in loving desire brings about large soul changes i would say desire is probably the most would powerful. you say it is the what it, about love well love is a desire yeah true is a yeah. desire if you look yeah. at desire as a group of emotions mm. love is one of those emotions yeah. but like there's no such thing as loving somebody without desire. Of course, you know, yeah. You, you, you can't love somebody without yeah. desire. To me, desire is one of those most is a is such a powerful emotion. Desire is what demo, that is what gains you a relationship with God. Yes. Desire gains you a relationship with self and your soulmate. Mm -hmm. Desire gains you an ever expanding life. It helps you engage <coughs> with the higher higher of higher God's laws. laws. It, in, it, it desire is what to. engages transformation. Yes. Right. So. So desire is a very key emotion to develop. And, and the sad thing is on earth, very few people actually develop it. Mm -hmm. and, and so when they pass in the spirit world, it's like it takes years and sometimes centuries mm -hmm. to develop even a little bit of desire mm -hmm. to progress, yeah. you know, because it, their desire has been so undeveloped. It's, it's something that most people nowadays on earth, even if they're 70 or 80 years old and just about to pass, mm -hmm. most of them uh, have the desire that that is less than the desire of a child. Yes, yeah, sad, isn't it? And it's very, very sad yeah. to see. And in fact, most people suppress the desires of children. Mm -hmm. So by the time yeah, they true. get to be an adult, their desire is less, almost completely yeah. non-existent. Or well, it's it's existing. It's just totally suppressed. Well, uh, no, a lot of it is it's it's so undeveloped. Gone. It's yeah. like a it's like a seed waiting to grow, but it hasn't got the water or the food mm. or the location to 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 grow. Yeah, it's, and, a, it's sort of like yeah. a, it's only a potential in yeah. most people. It's not yeah. a reality, yeah. and and it's not even it's not it's not something that's there but hidden. Mm -hmm. It's not there at all. Yeah, it's just like a seed that somebody has to now recognize, plant, yeah. and water yeah. and feed 
before it will grow into anything of significance. And, yeah. and finding it in the spirit world is very hard. Yeah. And, um, you know, because you live in these, the reasons for your lack of desire, obviously, most of the time fear-based. And so you live in these fear-based locations, not even wanting to find the seed mm. of your desire. That's right. And so it can, you can spend hundreds and, mm. or thousands of years even never never exercising desire yeah mm. we talk about yeah it's quite serious isn't it and mm. and um a lot of us who've been very suppressed as kids you know there's compensation for now as adults not not dealing with dealing that, with that. not forgiving it not forgiving that mm. state but it is a, it's a real thing for for a lot of people isn't it yes and the desire to live and to not feel your fears yeah. is a repentant state that you have to go through yeah in order to engage desire, yeah. to engage desire properly, you need to let yourself feel your fears, which is yes. being humble to them. Well, and that's that's what I had because desire, let's say, is the strongest emotion possible for the human soul. Feeling and acting in loving desire brings about large soul changes. Mm. Injured emotions such as fear are released more rapidly and love-based emotions grow and amplify. Yeah, because and instead of honouring fear or unloving emotion, mm -hmm. we're honouring the loving emotion first. Yeah. Yeah. It, it becomes our priority to honour yeah. that emotion first. Yes. And because our priority is to honour the emotion first that's loving, yeah. now all of our energy systems relating to anything that's unloving within us are able to be felt relatively easily. Yeah. Um, it's only, I've found, when we honour the fear, yeah. the unloving emotion yeah. above our desire, that's when our life gets stuck yeah. and, and we don't progress and we don't move forward, you know. Yeah. And sure, there's going to be times when you start to do that, but you, you need to really focus your attention on it because if you don't, you, you can stay in that state for long periods of time, mm. honouring fear over yes. desire. So you need to focus your attention, you're saying, on your current state. Developing a desire developing to a desire. let go of of yeah. honouring fear yes, and instead honour desire yeah. as yeah. your motivator. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm. All right, um, other compensation for this, you know, honouring desire and experiencing desire, there's just so much, isn't there? We're going to be closer with other people as well. We know ourselves, we experience more, we can connect yeah, to God. We, there's so many things. Being close to people is, is only possible if we truly share ourselves. Yeah. Now, if we don't know who we are, no. we're not sharing ourselves. Yeah. And we're making other people to work to know who we are. Yeah. And it's only those people who are willing to do a lot of work yeah. that might come to know us. Yeah. So, so we're really precluding a lot of relationships from yeah. developing as well. Yeah, yeah. we are. We are. Mm. Yeah. All right. So we could wax lyrical about many more positive results. <laughs> yes. But let's just say again... All results are proportionate to the extent of the willingness to experience desires and take action on loving desires. Yeah, and what I see happening here a lot is that people get inspired yes. to, you know, engage desire. You know, yes. we find this when at the end of our group sometimes people feel really inspired to engage desire. Yeah. But then life kicks in and they haven't developed the personal aspiration. Yeah to have desire in their yeah. life uh, and to stay connected with it in their yeah. life. And so they revert back to their fear-based state, waiting for the next inspiration. And that, that's not Absolutely. a positive thing to do. No. You've got to yeah. stop waiting for other people to inspire you yeah. and instead develop the aspiration to hold on, to, to discover and hold on and act upon your own personal desires. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If they're loving, if they're unloving, still have a desire to feel them. You need mm -hmm. to feel them. You need to work. You know, the only way you can work through them is by feeling them first, yeah. as we've pointed out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so probably following on from this, if I only, you know, experience my desires for a limited time and then shut down, or I'm selective about what desires I'll let, my, let myself experience feel. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. feel, yeah. then my positive compensation is going to be very, very limited. Mm. Uh, God's Can laws we stop will using be... the word positive compensation? Yes, sorry. The rewards. The rewards. The reward, rewarding compensation. Or the rewards, yeah. Yeah, the rewards From will be limited. Yeah. As God's laws will be correcting my desire to control some desire but experience other desire. That's right. Yeah. yeah. 
So, you know, we need to see here that God's laws are trying to correct our unloving attitude towards desire. Yes. And also encourage us to have a loving attitude towards desire yes. by rewarding the desire. That's and, right. And in fact, there are all of God's highest laws, which are all the laws surrounding love, forgiveness, repentance, and all those kind of highest laws. Yeah. Even the highest laws that we can find out about physically, like the law of aerodynamics compared to the law of gravity. Yeah. The law of aerodynamics had it took man longer to discover it yeah because less people exercise their, their desire, desire to discover it yeah right so and this is the problem is that there's a whole slew of physical laws still yet to be discovered because no one even has a desire to discover them yet yes yeah. yes mm. uh, and just finally to reiterate the laws operating upon the soul mean that I will not be able to fully experience one positive desire without surrendering to all of my emotions and desires. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So eventually I'm going to be required yes. through the way that God's designed the soul yeah. to actually feel everything. And, and, and yeah, sorry, go ahead. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. It's a good thing for us because that, that's how our soul's been designed to experience joy blissful emotion is not possible without the word emotion <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and a surrender a yeah. surrender to all emotion really yeah. given mm. that principle of suppression that we talked about mm. yeah okay thank you <laughs> proportionate compensation applied to acting in a sense of duty mm. so this is our final example where we're discussing proportionate compensation mm -hmm. And this is a widespread issue on mm -hmm. the planet. So let's, yes. let's ask the question. Mm -hmm. What proportionate compensation will I receive if I live my life according to what others expect of me and only act out of a sense of duty? So mm. I'm acting not out of personal desire, but out of a sense of what I should do, what society expects or what even I think I should do. Yeah. yeah. Well, I reckon you can answer a lot of this real good. Because you, <laughs> I've had you've had that it, life. You've had a, a lot of that. So, um, yeah. you know, yeah, doing things out of a sense of duty. Well, I, I, and I did write these notes so I can easily say what the yeah. attitudes are about. Yeah. Well, so there's correction needed upon this state, obviously, because I'm living opposite to the previous example, which is all about desire, desire experiencing yeah. desire, acting on loving desire. Here, I'm not experiencing desire. I'm just not. I'm saying I won't. I've got to think about what I should be doing. Yes, and, and happiness is not possible by doing what you should be doing. Never. Happiness is only possible by doing what you desire to do. Exactly. So, so basically, you're precluding yourself completely. From happiness. From yeah. happiness. But let's just quickly talk about what the attitude... God wants to correct some things. So, yeah, yeah, so let's look at the attitude. So um, I'm avoiding my true self either because I've got an addiction to approval from other people mm -hmm. or I want to avoid uh, feelings like guilt or fear, things that i imbibed in my childhood mm -hmm. where I feel like, I, I, you know, I can't experience those things. I've just got to keep in this, you know, yep. rabbit wheel, of, hamster wheel of just doing what I think. It can actually, also be a fear of attack of others, can't it? That's yeah, a huge one. That was a huge one for me, mm. which uh, the approval attack thing we get in this addiction. Yeah, you want yeah. approval to avoid this fear The reality of is if you do have a desire for approval, you also are afraid of attack. Exactly. That's automatic. Yes. Um, you know, that, that's going to be an automatic condition. That's and, what and the it. sadness of that is that yeah. you will then do everything to avoid attack. And that's which, all. Which is a very negative way of living your life. Yep. Mm. You were just responding. You're like a little pinball machine responding <clears> to, oh, there's a potential attack. I'll go that direction. Oh, there's another one. I'll go that direction. Dun, yeah. dun, dun. No yep. direction, no desire, nothing no. much happening in your life. That's right. You're actually lying. You are lying. <laughs> you are not being yourself. You are not connected to what you want. And you are giving people what, either what you think they want of you or what that, what you think that they think that you, you know, it all gets all very confusing, but it's a lie. It's a state of being, you're lying about your true nature to yourself and to other people. So you're basically living a complete lie. You are. By doing things out of duty, you're living a complete lie with everyone around you. Yes. Because there's no real desire in you to do it. You just, aside from feeding addictions, avoiding and avoiding attack and yeah. And, you know, presenting a facade, yes. which is all a lie. It's all a lie. It's all designed to keep everything under wraps yes. from an emotional perspective. Yeah. And 
Therefore, you're in total opposition with God's truth, God's laws. Every one of God's laws. Yeah, the yeah. whole the whole box and dice, really. Yes. Yes. The whole universe. Yes. Yep. Um, you do things because of rules that either are real in your childhood or things you've created. You just have this whole set of rules within you that are not God's laws and they're nothing to do with uh, who you are and what you want. Yeah. And you're living in this era that self-sacrifice is loving, that if I suppress myself and do what others want, then that's a good person. That's a nice person, a loving person. And it's a mm-hmm. big thing that God wants to correct in us. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and, like, and I can't emphasize enough my first comment, which was, without desire, happiness is not possible. Yeah. So, so you know, we, we need to understand that for happiness to be achieved, a desire must be present mm. and then the desire gets fulfilled. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if all you're doing is things out of a sense of duty, there is no desire. It's yeah. just driven by addiction, avoidance, fear of attack, fear of a lack of approval and mm-hmm. so forth. None of those things are desires. And so when you actually achieve something, no true sense of joy and happiness is possible. That's right. Everyone around you is going to think you just did what you should have done. Yeah. And you are going to think, I just did what I should, I just have, what done. I should have done and I wasn't connected to it either. Yeah. And I don't actually feel that great now. I'm just now on to the thinking of the next thing that I should do. Yeah. And in order to live in that state, you actually, you actually have to actively suppress your personal desires because they might interfere with what you are in the throes of doing all the time, which is trying to get approval and avoid attack. Exactly. And so that is a very kind of almost soul destroying place to be in because you are actively fighting your soul and your nature constantly. Yeah. You can't be happy and you are opposing all of God's, God, the way God created you. And mm. so there's a lot of compensation for that. Yeah. 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 And a lot of the conversation is relating to self. Mm. So, you know, you, you can't ever connect to yourself. You don't mm. ever feel happy. You don't ever feel satisfied. You don't mm. ever feel like anybody really knows you or yeah. really cares about you. Or you, you know, know yourself or yeah. anything. And there's a, there's a lot of sadness in that, yeah. that frequently we're avoiding. Yes. So, so you carry around a lot of sadness too. Yeah. We're usually in that place. So yeah. it, there's a lot of you know, quite damaging things that happen to yourself. Yes. Unfortunately. Yes. yes. And That's one of the things that God wants to correct through compensation is the lack of self-love inherent in that state. Correct. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about what we just started to talk about the compensation you experience. Mm. Um, uh, Yeah. So we're going to reap. Living according to a sense of duty is an avoidance of experiencing and embracing personal desire. Yeah. This is a fear and addiction based state Mm -hmm. and thus reaps compensation commensurate or proportionate to the fear and addiction that's within your soul. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, we've already mentioned that you have a very unhappy and unfulfilling life. You're never going to be fulfilled if you can't fulfill a true desire. And if all you're doing is fulfilling the desires of others in a way that you're not even connected to, yeah then then basically you're just doing things dutifully yes without feeling yeah. and and the sad thing about that too is that the things you do can't be rewarded by god yeah so so you might do a lot of nice things yeah. in quotation marks yeah. for other people because yeah. you think you have the duty to, to do, do it, it but it's like you, from god's perspective you it's like you it. never did it because because God can, God's laws only reward it if the desire was present while you were yes. doing it. <laughs> and, and that's very interesting to experience personally because you're doing something that you think God and others would want you to do, but you don't experience any happiness or reward. real <laughs> happiness, which is the reward while you're doing well, it. It's not the only reward. Done. It's yeah. not the only reward. No, it's part of it's the part reward. Of the rewards. And then um, conversely, when you do do something out of a true desire for others that is in harm, you feel immediately a sense of increased happiness, no matter how it's even received by others. That's right. Um, But like, it's quite a bizarre experience to live in that duty state all the time because you're doing all this stuff that you think should be really good, but you don't actually feel very good any of the time. Yeah. 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 
No, it's a, it, it creates a lot of physical illness and disease because it's a <laughs> severe lack of se love of yes. self. Yes. And also most of our actions are taken out of addiction to please others. Yeah. And this, there's quite severe diseases that are caused by that. Yeah. Things like cancers Cancer. and stuff like that yeah. are all caused by these kind of emotions, doing things for others in order to get approval or doing yeah. things for others in order to get acceptance and so forth. Yeah. These kind of uh, impure motivations yeah cause a lot of physical disease exactly. and so people who engage this kind of behavior which is a lack of love of self and a lack of love of others really because you're not really loving others either here no. because you're not presenting your true self and you you, no. you don't really want to do these things you're only doing them for what you get really yeah, that's right uh, which is it's not avoiding real. attack and, and getting some approval yeah. and so so there's a lot of diseases that are linked to the severe lack of love of self yes and uh, yes. this is a demonstration of those diseases of those. Mm. um you also can't experience intimacy with another person no. emotionally or physically from or sexually. A, sexually you feel alone all of the time mm. and you're actually dependent upon others for any sense of worth um, or direction in your life mm. because all you're driven by is the approval of others and so you and this now opens you exposes yeah. you to being controlled by others and manipulated yeah. by others unfortunately yeah. So yeah, now others know situation. that you're going to do what they want to do because you have an incessant need to do addiction to do it. Yep. And so now they will just keep you active doing those <laughs> yes. things, yes. which basically then gets you into a state of exhaustion. Yes. Eventually, you know, yes. where you feel exhausted with everybody and you just want to be alone. You want to be a hermit you know, yeah. as yeah. a result of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you can get angry with others. Uh, for not respecting the sacrifice you're making of yourself. Yeah, in other words, you, you've given to them, they should honour you and they oh. should respect you and they should give you a reward in return. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, usually we get pretty angry there. We do. Uh, we live in the belief that we'll be rejected for honest self-expression. So that's very painful and it has the compensation compounds there to try and expose to you that, no, it's this belief that's creating your unhappiness. And it's a false belief. It's a false belief. It's from yeah. God's perspective, it's false. So yeah. it needs to be corrected. Uh, we have to work very hard to maintain our efforts. We feel tired very often. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a part of compensation that's mm -hmm. occurring. Yep. Um, yeah. And, and we often end up seeking out people who, who want us to live in this addiction uh, just thinking who, who about want to control our lives when yeah. i when i moved in with you you didn't want to control my life you didn't want me to do things out of duty you didn't want me to sacrifice myself anymore and i just freaked out i didn't know how to to relate to a person who didn't want, want those things all of my other relationships had that to some degree or another mm. some element of that some of it was extreme mm. and some was not so much but that was my usual way of relating and even if uh, what I noticed then over time was I would try and engender that dynamic in relationships with people who didn't even want that dynamic with me because that's mm. how I got a sense of worth and direction. Mm. And so, um, yeah, you end up seeking out which what is essentially unloving and unhappy relationships because you're driven by this. Yes. And that's a part of the compensation as well. I yes. See. A yeah. person who truly loves you wants you to be you. Mm. And, and they want you to not do things out of duty, but do them out of desire. Yeah. If you don't desire it, then don't do it. You know, that, yeah. that's what they feel. A person who truly loves you feels that. Yeah. So, you know, obviously every time you act differently to that, you're encouraging relationships with people who will not love you. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, that, yeah. and that means that you're going to be drawing in people who don't love you and then feeling the consequence of not yeah. being loved in every relationship you have. Yeah. Yep. And again, this is one of these ones where everything's proportionate here. And that's what we mm. keep trying to bring through in this discussion. So all, all of the results, all of the correction I receive in this case is going to be proportionate to the extent of my denial of self and mm. the actions I take solely from a sense of duty um, and in avoidance of my true desires. Mm. But again, it's another one of these ones where if you've got it, it's pretty much pervasive through your whole yeah, life. Yeah, it's an epidemic in your yes, life, probably. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, I used to do things like that a lot yeah. and, and uh, you know, I got very sick doing it. Yeah. Um, 
once once I gave it up, my life changed significantly, and also my personal health changed significantly. Yes. yes. So I went from being a very sickly uh, individual, you know, sick every month or so, or more, mm -hmm. and, and often having to be hospitalised and things for different problems, to be to being completely healthy and uh, and not seeing a doctor for twenty years. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. So you, you know, a lot of these kind of uh, self uh, are self love-based issues yes. do cause a lot of our personal illnesses and mm -hmm. sicknesses mm -hmm. and we need to um, understand the relationship really yeah. between the lack of that love of self and the illnesses the we illness. face. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. And then obviously um, as soon as we start to embrace true desires in certain aspects of our life or in for periods of time we immediately start to see the changes in compensation we're still living with the compensation um mm. the more we resist that and mm. it's still going to be um you know quite corrective it's going to be um quite god's going to be doing a lot to try and help us face the truth of what we're doing and the error in what we're doing and how how much in disharmony it love with love it is yes. is really you remember the law of compensation is always about the disharmony with love correcting disharmony with love rewarding the harmony with love yeah so you know most of us on earth uh, receive a lot of correction because we're because the earth itself as we've discussed in the assistance group yeah. is way out of harmony with god's view of love so naturally a lot of us begin this process by having a lot of correction mm -hmm. and we need the correction yeah. if we're ever going to bring ourselves into harmony with love and have a happier life definitely yeah um so that concludes today's session Pretty much. Thank you very much for discussing all those aspects of uh, proportionate compensation. Mm. Uh, the good. I think we had some good examples. And as I keep saying, uh, compensation is something that we're dealing with every day of our lives, pretty much. And yet, very often we're trying to suppress even our awareness of the compensation, mm. the corrective compensation that's going on in our lives all the time. And yet mm. it is just there to correct us and bring us towards more happiness. And, and it has a severe impact on our on the forgiveness and repentance process, which we're leading to, because mm -hmm. you can see that compensation is there because we're refusing to forgive and repent. Yes. And, and as a result of that, we can see that compensation is is God's backstop, if you like, yeah. his, his go to place if you refuse to engage the higher laws yeah. of forgiveness and repentance. So it is very important to understand how compensation works yeah. and why compensation is in play yeah. when we refuse to forgive and repent. Yes. And this is why this discussion that we've had has been three sessions now, including today. We've had sessions five, six and seven of the discussion. It's all been about compensation, and we we have one more session yes. tomorrow, hopefully coming, which is also about compensation, because we we need people to understand the basis of what happens when you really resist <laughs> trying to engage that higher laws of forgiveness yeah. and repentance and and what goes on and the why it goes on the why and the how isn't yeah. it that we've been yeah. covering so we've talked about you know we've used this analogy of sowing and reaping to try and help people see what what compensation it's like the it's like the consequences are happening in our life all the time and we're, mm. we're elaborating on how we can see it it's it's in kind it's proportionate and in our next session we're going to talk about how um when we try and do nothing what actually happens is actually compensation for that and mm. often we want to be able to do nothing and get like rewarding compensation we're not going to get that obviously we're going to get corrective um compensation but we'll talk more about that in our mm. next session mm. and and hopefully, as you said, we're starting to gain this picture that compensation is a loving provision. God's saying, well, look, you could do it the easy way. Forgive, repent. This is the way I've designed you for the most happiness. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to, I love you so much that I, you know, I want you to experience joy and happiness. That's my overall desire, my, as a God, desire for you guys. So I'm going to put this stuff in place to not only help you come towards love, but also to like love my other children who might be affected by your choices. Exactly. And so it's a part of God demonstrating his his equality of justice and, and, ju and justice yes. and and uh, you know it is true 
it is the true mercy is to display mercy to all yes rather than mercy to one at, at yeah. the harm of another yes and so justice doesn't really require mercy no. when it's properly adhered to yes and uh, and we need to understand that and, yeah. and compensation is all about justice yeah it's all about righting the wrongs of the past yeah. and fixing the reasons why mm. those wrongs were engaged and and so is repentance and forgiveness yes. about that but but repentance and forgiveness requires desire to mm -hmm. engage whereas compensation that that doesn't require desire to engage that's just something that's going to be engaged standard Stand, standard issue yes yeah, <laughs> it's, it's one of the it, it is one of the fundamental laws of operation that govern the human soul yeah. and so we need to understand it better yes and we need to see how it fits into this big framework mm. this loving framework of laws that god has for us to exist in and the importance of it mm. yeah. yeah yeah so so our discussions about compensation are a necessary part yeah. of our answers to questions about forgiveness and repentance yes. because a lot of times people are mixing up yes. forgiveness and repentance with what's really compensation, compensation. and and we need to uh, have a quite a labored conversation yes. about compensation <laughs> in order for people to understand the difference between exercising a real desire to forgive yeah. and repent compared to being pushed by the law mm -hmm. into a state of recognition of your problems yeah. and 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 a desire to no longer be unloving you know yes. a desire to be loving rather than unloving yeah. and and the law the law of compensation is, is as i said god's backstop for you yes. like that's what happens to you if you choose yeah. to avoid the law of Repentance, repentance and forgiveness, forgiveness. Mm. so so what we're going to do next session is wrap up we could talk again about compensation then we'll finish it off we'll relate compensation to forgiveness and repentance as we've mm. been starting to do through this whole yes. conversation um and then we're going to move on so we'll see through that how loving the provision of compensation is yeah. and then we're going to move on to another really beautiful provision God has made for us to yes. help us in this process and guide us towards forgiveness and repentance. And so we're going to talk about the conscience, the human conscience, which is something that you've never really talked about in depth. Yeah, in I, I, there hasn't been too many opportunities no. to speak of it in public. Yeah. And and most people, you know, get so hung up about emotions, in yeah. particular when we're <laughs> in public, that they don't understand some of the other operations of the soul yeah. and and we haven't had the opportunity to talk much about it so it's great that we can start to introduce the concept yeah. of the conscience to people yeah. and, and see what it really is and how it really operates yeah. and uh, and how it relates to god's communication with us and yes. god's relationship with us god's justice and mercy and all those things you're talking about so we're really leading We've started at Forgiveness and Repentance. Now we're doing all this background work to see what else is there to help us in this process. And then we'll loop right back around at the end to... Answering some... specific questions about yeah. the Forgiveness and Repentance processes, yeah. but making sure that there's no misunderstanding yes. about oh, what part's my conscience, what's part, what it's part is conversation, what part is emotion, and what part is... Is a real desire to forgive and repent. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So these are the things we need to cover in the future. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for your time. I've just thoroughly enjoyed our discussion yeah. today, Dylan. Yeah. And yeah. thank you everyone for joining us. Mm. And uh, we'll hopefully see you again soon for our next discussion in conversation. <laughs>